My wife's female best friend has arrived and they often retire. I'm sure they're in love with each other. One day I found an old photo of them together. I have been married to my wife for seven years and we met eight years ago at a church meeting where we became friends. My wife is a quiet, kind, and beautiful woman, any man's dream. Naturally, I fell for her instantly. However, she always behaved in what I thought was a shy manner, not wanting to cuddle with me and only kissing me on rare occasions. We were both raised in Christian families in a very religious part of our country. Unlike me, her parents were the type who followed the holy doctrine very seriously, so she has a traditional way of thinking about religion and how women should behave. I always thought that her behavior was due to this upbringing. Sometimes I think she looks like a robot. She's nice and kind to everyone, but I've occasionally seen her sitting quietly, staring into space as if she were dead. Over the years, I began to accept this as a normal part of her personality because she always refused to see a psychologist, insisting that she was just like that. Two months ago, everything changed when she found out that her best friend from high school was coming back to town. I had never seen her so happy and alive. I felt happy for her, thinking that what she needed was a female friend. My wife never used to leave the house much, but since this woman arrived in town, she has been going out as often as possible. She became a different person, but not in a bad way. She looked full of life. To be honest, I had never seen her smile as much as when she talked about going out for coffee with her friend. For the record, I'm sure she's not having an affair because she doesn't know how to lie, and her behavior towards me hasn't changed. I won't deny it. Recently, I started to feel jealous of this woman. She seems to be the reason why my wife smiles so much and is on her phone all day. Out of pure curiosity, three days ago, I checked her Facebook profile. Some of her albums were public, and I found many pictures of her and my wife from high school. In these photos, the woman was hugging my wife as if they were a couple. In some pictures, they were holding hands or looking at each other with bright smiles, something my wife never does with me. Her family hates gay people. Although my wife has never spoken ill of them, she just avoids talking about the topic, which now makes sense to me. I don't know whether to confront her because maybe I'm overthinking things or perhaps she's in love with her ex-girlfriend. The only thing I'm sure of is that she only looks truly happy when talking about this woman. I don't know what to do. Relevant Comments Commenter Yes, she does love her friend because she's her friend. All I saw in your post was a woman being excited that a close friend she hasn't seen in years is coming back and that there were pictures of them hugging. I'm assuming all this paranoia is stemming from your religious upbringing because all I'm seeing are two women who are friends. If you should be asking anything, it's why didn't you notice the clear loneliness your wife was feeling before this friend came back into her life? OP. I referred to the way they held hands, especially because my wife and I never held hands. When we started dating, every time I tried, she told me not to hug her or hold her hands because she doesn't like romantic things. I always respected her boundaries about that, so I did get confused when I saw her in pictures like that with another person. We do have a healthy relationship in terms of feelings. When I notice she's off, we talk, although she never wanted to see a psychologist. She likes to talk about why she feels weird that day, but always ends up saying that that's her personality. We have always been close friends since we met, but it surprised me when I saw she actually likes being hugged by someone. Commenter. I find that quite peculiar. Surely at some point your paths would inevitably cross even if you weren't actively seeking it out. Has your wife provided any explanation as to why her friend wouldn't be interested in meeting you? I can't think of many people who wouldn't want to meet their best friend's significant other. OP. I feel the same way, which is why I find it odd. My wife simply says that her friend isn't interested in meeting me and then shuts down the conversation. I have a feeling that if I press for more details, it might lead to an argument, and I always prefer to avoid that. I do know that her friend moved to the capital city, and sometimes people become elitist after living there. However, that wouldn't make much sense in this case, since I spent half my life in the capital. Additionally, while my family is religious, I've never been strictly religious myself. So, I really don't understand why her friend doesn't want to meet me. Update. I decided to confront my wife about the photos with her friend from high school. Everyone in the online post said they were most likely just friends, which put my mind at ease, making me think I was overthinking the situation. However, 
When I showed her the photos, she began to breathe rapidly, which I think was a panic attack. I helped her calm down, but then she got upset because I had sneaked onto her friend's Facebook profile. I knew she was trying to change the subject because she often does that, so I got serious and insisted she talk. After a few long minutes of her attempting to divert the conversation, she finally told me everything. Indeed, she and her friend used to be a couple during high school and had been friends since kindergarten. They kept their relationship a secret, pretending to be only best friends until my wife's parents found out, beat her up, and separated them. Her friend moved to the capital that year and they never saw each other again. But from what my wife said and showed me, they never stopped loving each other. At some point in the conversation, my wife stopped calling her friend by name and, without realizing it, started calling her Mi Amor, which hurt me because in all our years of marriage, she never called me that. I asked her if she was cheating on me with her friend, and she said they never kissed or anything. But I'm sure she's emotionally cheating on me. She doesn't understand that concept, so she genuinely believes she's not doing anything wrong. The reason why her friend never wanted to meet me or even attend our wedding is because she hates seeing her love married to a man she doesn't like and living what she considers a lie. Ouch. I asked my wife if she loves me, and she said yes, but like a best friend. Yes, my own wife just friend-zoned me. She cried a lot, expressing deep sorrow for lying to me. When we first met, we really clicked as friends, and she revealed that her parents had insisted she marry me so she could heal. This revelation explained why she never liked to hug, cuddle, or engage in any romantic activities with me. It wasn't because she was shy, but because she didn't like me in that way. I felt a surge of emotions, anger, sadness, and the urge to run away. I had been patient and empathetic through all the times she rejected my affection, often feeling alone. For years, I had been questioning if I was a bad husband or if I was unknowingly treating her poorly leading to insecurities about my own personality. But she assured me that I was never the problem. Despite my intense feelings, I didn't cry or yell. Instead, I left the house and went to my sister's place. We didn't discuss divorce or anything of that nature. In fact, I think my wife doesn't even see any issue with what she did with her friend. However, I am certain that I don't want to spend the rest of my life in a loveless marriage with a woman who will never love me back. I'm sorry for the long post. I'm just venting at this point. I feel like I've wasted all my youth. I didn't expect to update so quickly, but I needed to talk about this. It's not that I don't feel bad for her. I do. But now I feel even worse for myself. Next update. I returned to my house the day after my last update and my ex-wife was lying on the couch. The first thing I said when I entered was, we're going to divorce. Maybe that wasn't the best way to say it but she has a habit of changing the topic whenever I want to discuss serious matters, and I didn't want her to do that this time. She clearly didn't expect it, and started to cry and have an anxiety attack, saying that we couldn't divorce and that I couldn't do this to us. What hit me harder was when she said, there's no point in us breaking up. The fact that I don't love you doesn't change anything. Which, in a way, is true. I realized that our relationship had always been like that, her treating me just like a friend and me accepting that kind of treatment. She said that she never cheated or anything like that, even after I explained again what emotional cheating means. I told her that she's not even attracted to men, so there's no sense in staying married because we're just not right for each other. I asked her if she still loved that best friend, and she didn't deny it but kept insisting that we shouldn't divorce. I can understand why she was so desperate, but it made me feel used, like I was her pathetic beard who she could always use as a shield for herself or a dog who would always be happy with the smallest token of affection. I don't need her signature to get a divorce, so even if she doesn't want to, we're 100% going to break up. I told her I'm not going to out her, but if anyone asks, I'll just tell the truth while avoiding the topic of her sexuality because I don't want people gossiping and assuming things that didn't happen. The land and basically everything in the house are mine. Maybe I'm an asshole for this, but I told her that I will not give her anything because it's all mine, and I inherited the land from my grandfather. At this point, she just looked sad and defeated and didn't complain or anything, although I will get advice from a lawyer to be sure. I told her that she could stay in the house until December, and she responded that she would probably have to go back to live with her parents which actually made me feel bad because my ex-in-laws are not good people. But from what she said, she's still talking with her best friend, so luckily she's not alone. 
The conversation ended awkwardly with me just leaving. For now, I'm staying at my sister's house. I can have time for myself since she and my other sisters are out of the province for a concert. I haven't talked with my ex-wife since that day, and she hasn't tried to contact me. However, I know that she told my ex-in-laws about the divorce because they tried to contact me to ask why we're divorcing. I just responded that these are things that need to be resolved only between her and me. This will probably be my last update because I will go no contact with my ex-wife after the divorce. We don't have children. Sometimes she would start talking about having a baby, and now I feel really relieved that I always said I didn't feel ready. Maybe something in me already knew she wasn't right for me. So we don't have anything tying us together. I've been seeing a psychologist since I was a child, and I think that has helped me a lot in channeling my emotions. Many in the comments suggested that I shouldn't have empathy for her or feel anything for her at all, but the truth is, we're both broken people suffering from religious trauma, and I know how much that can mess with one's mind and heart. Some people in the comments were confused about why I stayed with her when it was clear she didn't love me romantically. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe I always justified her actions because in some way I felt identified with her. Perhaps I have a hero complex or maybe my sense of duty is so strong that I felt internally tied to her and responsible for making her happy as her husband, even if she always rejected my romantic love. That's something I will talk about and work through with my psychologist. I also received questions about why I married her in the first place. She was the one who suggested we should marry, and I was immature and young at that time. Because we got along well, I thought it was a good idea. For now, I just want to get divorced and then spend time with my family. In general, I feel numb and weird. I haven't cried yet. In my session yesterday, my psychologist told me that he thinks I already grieved the relationship a long time ago, even if I didn't realize it. I don't feel like I've lost a wife, but rather like I've lost a close and good friend and companion. It's not a heartbreak pain, but more of a betrayal pain. Anyway, I don't want anything to do with her anymore. Maybe I'm being a bad person for abandoning her, knowing the type of life she had, but I can't save someone who doesn't want to be saved, and I'm tired of trying. For now, I'll just say goodbye. Not to a woman I saw as the love of my life, but to a woman who helped me and was a good friend for years. I'm really thankful for the kind comments people left. Even some mean ones made me think that maybe I'm too quiet in how I've reacted. Is that something wrong? I've never been the temperamental type. I'm sorry if this update is a boring one and not about me starting my villain era, but that's just not my style. Update. I want to clarify some things. 1. I never married her because I wanted a submissive woman. We were both like best friends. I'm not sure why some comments suggested that I wanted a housewife when I didn't. Many times I offered her the opportunity to work with me, but she never wanted to look for a job or study something. I didn't insist because we were doing well financially. 2. I wasn't going to open the relationship for her. Luckily, I realized I deserve so much better. To be honest, I've already given up too many things for her to also give up my life. Maybe some people are okay with having a loveless marriage, but not me. Not anymore. 3. I read a lot of comments saying he should help her, he should be generous with the divorce. But how do you help a person who doesn't want to be helped? I tried for years to help her, and now all I hear about are the horrible things she did behind my back, which I don't really want to discuss. 4. Some say she used you because she was afraid of coming out. I understand that, I really do, but did I deserve that? Did I deserve to be used? Did I deserve for her to use my money to buy things for her best friend? I don't think so. We live in an open country. Even one of my sisters is a lesbian and married. I know I would have helped my soon-to-be ex-wife in the past if she had confessed that to me. 5. We got married, but she had countless opportunities to tell me the truth. She never cared about my insecurities regarding her. Instead, she kept insisting that we should have a baby. Now I realize that she wanted that to ensure that if we divorced, she would get something since she never worked or studied. 6. I found out her best friend has a wife and a baby, so no, my ex-wife is not with her. The situation became even more messed up, but honestly, I don't want to get into that. My ex keeps insisting that she never cheated on me physically with her best friend, and I think I believe her on that at least. 7. I also suffer from religious trauma, and trauma doesn't make you a bad person. That's something internal. 8. 
Nobody forced her into the marriage. In my country, nobody does that. I asked her why she wanted to marry, and she said that her parents told her she needed to heal and that I was a good man for her. That's why she used to insist a lot on getting married. If anyone wants to know how everything ended, I'm getting divorced. It's a tedious and lengthy process, but I'm keeping the house, the car, and everything else. Am I selfish? Maybe, but I wanted to think of myself for once in my life. Working for those things was hard, and I dedicated my life to building my home. My ex-wife is currently living with her brother. She never asked how I was doing, not even when I left the house after discovering the truth. Despite this, I did check in on her during the first few days, sending messages to see how she was feeling. A few days ago, I suffered a mental breakdown because she kept sending me texts, saying that we should get back together, that we should have a child. I never wanted to have a baby with her, despite her many insistences, and that it doesn't matter that she doesn't love me. She never loved me, and we lived well, so I should continue the marriage for her. These messages made me realize that she's only trying to make me feel guilty. It made me understand that to her, I'm not even human. Maybe not even a dog in her eyes. So I blocked her number. I understand she's anxious because she doesn't have anything, but it's not like I never told her to finish a career. To be honest, I've just given up on her. I'm too tired of this situation. I don't really know what she's going to do with her life, but I don't care anymore. My psychologist helped me realize all the narcissistic traits she has. I want to move on with my life because I deserve that and because I'm tired of being used. Last update. I'm finally divorced. I thought it would take at least eight months to complete, but it was faster than I anticipated since, in my country, only one person's signature is required for the divorce to be finalized. When my ex-wife realized we were truly going to part ways, she started complicating things for me. She even fabricated a story that I had cheated on her when, in reality, I had only stated that we were divorcing due to differences. This way no one would ask questions, not even her parents, who now think I'm the one who cheated. But I don't care about that. As I always say, I got tired of trying to understand her and her actions. She began to bother me a lot, even showing up at the house. I didn't want to deal with her anymore, so I just gave her some of the furniture and appliances, even though I paid for everything. It doesn't matter, she was a housewife, so she deserves her share in the divorce. Knowing her, she would have kept insisting, and I was so mentally exhausted at that point that I just wanted to stop seeing her forever and be free of her. I guess she came out of the closet herself because she's now dating an older woman and living with her as far as I know. I don't know if she lied to me, and I don't want to know. I don't want to know if that woman is another lover she had or how well they know each other. I don't care. I don't want to hurt myself with that information. It's her life, so at least now she's being herself. My sisters wanted to go and confront her when they found out, but I told them not to because she could take advantage of that situation. I discovered a lot of other things she did behind my back, but I don't want to discuss them. I'll just say that I'm a big fool. I hope she can finally be happy and stop using people for her own benefit since I know she wasn't happy with me. I wish happiness for myself, too. As for her best friend, I have no idea what happened to her. My sister knows that woman's wife, and to this day, they still upload photos together with their baby. My sister couldn't talk about it to that woman's wife because she doesn't have any proof. I've been feeling good, though I'm not going to lie and say it's easy. It seems like people on the internet have more empathy for my ex than for me when I talk about this, haha. <laughs> but now, I don't care anymore. I'd rather it be this way because I reject being a victim. My family and friends are my biggest support. I used to hide a lot of things from my psychologist because I knew he would tell me those things were wrong, and a big part of me didn't want to hear the truth. However, a few months ago, I was completely honest about many things that happened in my marriage. He scolded me a little but has helped me see all the abusive things I suffered. Even though it wasn't physical abuse, I think it mentally damaged me a lot. I'm not going to play the victim because I repeatedly refused to leave and kept trying like a fool. I don't see myself as a victim. I've been a victim before, and I don't want to feel that way again. I've been going out with my friends to clubs, and having married so young, I lost part of my youth because I had to work, study, and maintain a household. So, I've been really enjoying partying. Less than a month ago, I started dating a girl. It's nothing serious, but we enjoy each other's company. It's weird to be with a woman who makes me feel appreciated, and she doesn't look at me with boredom when I talk. I'm really quiet. 
Some people called me sexist for saying that being quiet is a good thing, but I never saw it as a flaw. But she's very talkative, so it's always good to have a conversation with her. My ex-wife and I had almost no intimacy. I have a trauma, and it was hard for me to feel comfortable being intimate. Looking back, I thought my ex just wanted to make me feel comfortable. But now I see that she used my trauma as an excuse not to touch me. Every time I tried to get comfortable, she would just say, You know, let's stop this or you'll have nightmares later. I was very foolish to believe all that. She just didn't want to touch me. But thanks to this new girl, I've started to enjoy myself and feel comfortable. Not many significant things have happened, honestly. And I doubt many people would be interested in this. But I thought it wouldn't hurt to post an update. After giving the appliances and furniture to my ex, she completely stopped talking to me. I've been focusing on myself. I feel like I'm too young to be divorced, but I feel good. I see this as my biggest sign to start anew, and I want to move forward for myself and my family. I think I've learned a lot from this experience, as painful as it still is. How do you like these stories? Write your opinion in the comments. Let's get 1,000 subscribers on this channel. Love you.